Everyone wants to be that hero who saves the day. Well, this is Patrick F. McManus' story in The Good Samaritan Strikes Again. You've probably heard about the fellow who rescued the person in distress and then vanished without even leaving his name. Who was that heroic and modest guy? Bystanders asked. It was me. Returning from an ice fishing trip a few years ago, I got caught in a blizzard at the top of a mountain pass. As I crept along through the blinding swirls of snow, a panel truck passed me. I decided to follow it on the assumption that the driver obviously knew where the road was. Presently, the driver, off, the driver smashed into a road divider, thereby ruining my perfectly good assumption, not to mention his truck. The truck bounced 10 feet into the air and plopped back down onto the road. This was the kind of emergency for which years of experience had prepared me. I stopped and calmly sized up the situation. This, by the way, is a good approach to emergencies because it allows time for someone else to show up, someone who might be even more of a take charge guy than you are. But there wasn't another vehicle in sight. Despite an old war wound that causes my knees to buckle during moments of crisis, I crossed the road and peeked in a broken window of the crumpled car and steaming vehicle. The dark interior of the car appeared unoccupied, but I spoke in it anyway. How you doing? <laughs> a stupid question is often the best kind in a crisis situation. Fine, buddy, a voice croaked. I really like it in here in the glove compartment. As my eyes adjusted to the dim light, I ascertained that the victim wasn't actually in the glove compartment, but pretty well compressed under the dashboard. I knew better than to move the accident victim and thereby cause him further injury. Still, I thought I should do something. But what? The victim and I stared silently at each other. He from under the dashboard, and I through the broken window. Maybe he would be comforted by some light conversation, I thought. So, some storm we're having, eh? I cried. I really don't feel up to light conversation at the moment. Oh, right, okay. Then, maybe I better have a look under the hood, I said. Great, croaked the victim. Go look under the hood. The hood was on the other side of the highway. I went over and looked under it. <laughs> Nothing. I can never really tell anything from looking under a hood anyway, but that's what my friends always say. Let's have a look under the hood. It sounds good. I walked back and looked in the engine compartment, then went back to the window. Looks like you're gonna need a little front end work, I said. You're telling me, the victim broke. My truck's gonna need some too. <laughs> Suddenly, I thought of something actually to do. Wait here, I said. I'll be right back. No hurry. You know, you seem to be croaking, I said, thinking you might need a drink of water. You really think so? Definitely. Maybe you're catching cold. Big deal, he said. I went back to my car and returned with a water bottle and a blanket to with, with which to cover the victim. But I couldn't budge the crumpled door. The only thing to do was to climb in through the window. I'm going to climb in through the window, I told the victim. Don't be nervous. Why? He asked nervously, as if he expected me to rob him. How come you're climbing through the window? I want to cover you up with a blanket so you don't catch cold, I said. Whatever, he said. I brushed away the remaining shards of glass and slithered in through the window. It was so dark and cramped inside that I couldn't see what I was doing. I tried to feel along the victim's body so I could tuck the blanket in around him. My hand touched something wet and mushy. I gasped and jerked away. It's okay, the victim said, obviously attempting to comfort me. It's really nothing. You call that nothing, I said. You're all wet and mushy. Well, not exactly nothing. It's just a squished banana. Oh, I said, you gave me a bit of a start. Yeah, me too, when I first noticed it. Actually, I wouldn't feel all that bad if you didn't have your knee in my groin. Oh, sorry, I said. I'll just tuck this blanket around you until the ambulance comes. And now I'll pour a little water into your mouth. Ah, that's my ear, you fool. <laughs> it's a strange place for an ear. Maybe you could just let me croak in peace. How about that? He made a muffled sound. There, I've got you covered from the tips of your toes to the top of your head. That should keep you nice and cozy until the ambulance comes. 
Hey, no problem. All at once, cars and trucks are pulling up on all sides of us. Men began shouting at each other with the authoritative voices of people who are even better than I in an emergency. I've got a fire extinguisher and a crowbar. Get a first aid kit and some blankets. Someone call the cops and an ambulance. Careful with that poor guy, his feet are sticking out the window. Hands grabbed my legs and tugged me through the window. Keep them straight, no bending. Watch his arms and head, someone said. Stop, I cried, I'm not hurt. Don't try to talk, pal, you're a little gushy in front. Banana, it's just squished banana. They laid me on a blanket. I struggled to get up, but was pushed back down. Don't move, you may have internal injuries. No, you don't understand, see, I was just driving my car and could be some head injuries, someone said. His face is messed up pretty bad. <laughs> my face is not messed up, I shouted. Don't worry, pal, plastic surgeons can fix you up better than you. Just take it easy, don't try to talk. Here comes a cop in an ambulance. Someone shouted over the whales of the ambulance and police car. Anyone else in the wreck? Nah, just a rumpled blanket and some junk under the dash. Here comes the wrecker. Fortunately, the folks at the wrecking yard found the true victim under the dashboard and rushed him off to a hospital. He was released the next day, hardly the worse for wear. I heard he kept asking the identity of the good Samaritan who covered him with the blanket, but no one knew. Once again, the helpful stranger vanished without so much as leaving his name. I think it's better that way. I really do.